Okie dokie, ladies and gentlemen, everyone, between we have reached the final part of Allo. This episode may go on a bit longer than the other ones, but hey, we're over after this. So let's dive right in and carry on the over-analysis of Alum. Well done, Alum. So the question still remains, what does God need with a mech? I'm still not convinced he isn't a wizard who's just getting dumb people to blindly follow his every command. Cause think about it, all the altruists has ever offered up was a cure for the vague which may or may not exist, and the Rogations seem to believe that when you die, you get to hang out with him. And other than a few hollow words saying here and there that he loves you in a kind of creepy homoerotic way, there's really not much to the altruist character except, oh my god, he's magicking a mech out of the mountain. How? You know... It's too late in the game to question anything. The altruist wants a giant dead. Because, you know, this giant's just working for a buck. It's not like they could have found some way to pay him off. No, 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 no. The altruist has bloodlust. He wants this giant dead because he sure as hell didn't die for this thing. He only dies for humans and those, like, elf things. Or just kind of olive people. <laughs> Please, your tin can is no match. My tin can is powered by the unfeigned altruist. Either way, we get an epic combat scene now with the giant. Let's watch it in all of its glorious detail. No, there was no cute editing done on my part. That's exactly what happens. You hit attack, he dies. And then we catch up with the Corku couple, the Olive people. And yeah, it turns out the unfeigned altruist wants her to lead the people out of hiding and to the city, cuz... I don't know. He probably wants a fanatical mob there to overwhelm the innocent civilians so they can take over and start up a theocracy. What is that monstrosity coming straight at Cosmos? Deploy all e -bots. Yes, sir. You Do you think your little robots can fight? I mean, yeah, probably they have projectile weapons, and if there's enough of them, surely they could hinder it or at least harm it enough to delay, and I don't know, maybe there'll be some plan, like a flanking. Either way, it doesn't really matter, because Satan's met this in the past. Yeah, this mech, this very same mech who's, I don't know, just been riding around. I guess Satan won the last matchup, because he knows how to deal with it. I guess it makes sense. Satan's supposed to be the cunning, cool, smart one. Alum, wait! Symmetry? I thought you were captured with the Rogations. Alum, sweetie, a denial is a river in Egypt, and it's also what you have. I mean, you saw Symmetry. It gets shot in front of your face. It didn't happen that long ago. Why are you being fooled by this, son? Oh, God, you are not smart. Jump on, Symmetry. I'm gonna cut this heat pillar down. Am I too late? The power of the Dunamis is seeping pride into you. Please, Alum. Listen to me. Symmetry, there's no time. I'm here to free the Cosmosians from the deception of Invidious Umbra. Yes, and that deception is keeping people warm. Because again, this is a real heat pillar. It's a furnace for the city. It's not some illusion-creating device. The altruist wants these people to be cold. I said it before and I'll say it again. I don't know why. Maybe he's like a parasite that can only exist in certain temperatures. If I knew you'd become this, I never would have helped you. Yeah, and I could say the same thing about this whole game. Symmetry, what are you saying? Now, what we're about to witness is not the strength of street knowledge, but instead the strength of dumbassery. So, Satan, through the power of doubt and not constantly focusing on the altruist, is able to get inside the suit. But then the altruist gets off his lazy ass and scares Satan away, allowing Alum to destroy the heat pillar and successfully make everyone cold. And then Satan responds with this. So, Satan just can knock the head off the mech with incredible ease. He didn't seem to have to do anything besides just make like a ghostly fist and then just whack the head off. Yeah, why didn't Satan just do this before? Why did he do that weird 
doubt thing and try to get inside the mech. This should have been plan A, because it seems like it really worked. And it seems like the altruists could have done nothing about it, nor could have Alan. I'm guessing that the writer didn't quite know how to get the mech destroyed, so he just worked out a literal hand wave and yeah now the mech's destroyed although it does beg the question why doesn't satan use these awesome powers of his just to reach in and grab alum and crush him like a bug but then again villains are dumb in this game Wow, this mech seems like it's really chintzily built that glass just gave away with incredible ease. Good thing the villain's main tower was there, otherwise Alan would have fallen to his death. Anyway, outside the city all the Korku, Elf, Olive people have assembled. Rather quickly and with no problems at all it seems. Yeah, that, that wasn't difficult. I guess the lady has everyone's email and just, you know, told them to be here. And they listened. Although the game explicitly said these people no longer trust one another. Never mind, it doesn't matter. They're all here now because, well, the altruist wants them to be here to, I suppose, invade the city. Yeah, it's a well-intended invasion, but it's an invasion nevertheless. And you have to think, if you're just someone living in Cosmos with all this crazy stuff going on, odds are you're gonna be pretty damn scared. And also odds are you may like Mr. Glem, because you have to bear in mind he was running a pretty effective propaganda war for a while now, where you'd have the lurids come into the city, the bots would shoot him, and then people would be like, wow, Mr. Glem's great, he's keeping us safe. So you have to think there'd be a few people who would be really supportive of Mr. Glem's rule. And even if they don't care for Mr. Glim, there's no reason to think that people wouldn't try to defend their city. After all, these people have been isolated. They're unaware of the outside world, and all of a sudden, they're being attacked by a big robot, and a bunch of mysterious people are at their walls. I mean, if it was me, I could easily see myself throwing some tiles, or at least trying to buy a gun, which exists in this universe, so it, it sounds like they're going to be a bloodbath. Alan? Wake up! Stay away from him, Umbra! Leave him alone! So if all it takes is one little glowing rushlight, why didn't they deck out the mech and glowing rushlights again? <sighs> Whatever. What's going on out there? Dashu, we need to get out of here. Like, now. I think I've already stated rather explicitly that the voice acting's kind of piss poor. And yeah, that, that was another moment of it. But yeah, it doesn't really matter because the rogation's got to figure out how to escape, which involves kicking a can around and then the GoBot's free and, well, he gets at him, so let's just catch up with the thing there. Ah! Well, that electrical shock wouldn't have killed him, but then again, Alum's not a mere mortal anymore. Hell, look what happens when you click on the rushlight. Altruist, help! Alan, the unfeigned armor is still yours. Use it. Yeah, Alan looks like a shittier version of Batman. But with this getup, he totally saves the Rogations, and then the Rogations are all like, Oh my god, we have a plan. Most of us will stand around holding our rushlights in front of a Satan. We'll give the traitor the gun to shoot Ebots coming up the stairs. And Dash, you and Alum go and try to kill Mr. Glem. I don't know what else they'd be trying to do, because they have, like, swords and guns. They're totally trying to kill him. They're not trying to, like, save his soul or anything. No, 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 no. Again, this is a bloodthirsty god. Now, we have to get to Mr. Glem's office. Look what the cat dragged in. Mr. Glem. Alum, is that you? I had a funny feeling that you had something to do with all of this. Well, I have someone here who wants to say hello. Do you recognize her? Esther, you're alive! Alum, I'm sorry! I was a fool. I thought I needed something else. Huh, I, I guess she seems fixed now. She's talking. And is apologetic. What a turn. I guess she's over the vague, which was making her not talking, and... Uh, how does a vague work again? No, you were right. You needed the unfeigned altruist. I'm not enough to satisfy the void in your heart. That's kind of creepy in a way. But nevertheless, I can totally buy that Alum isn't a very satisfying lover. So yeah, let's just go ahead and 
jump ahead a little bit. Alan and Dashu need to beat Mr. Glem's little security measures. And how convenient. Most of them involve puzzles that need two people to solve. So basically you gotta stand in some pressure plates and Alan's gotta put up his shield and block some bullets and then you gotta mess around with some e-bots for a while. And then eventually, well, let me show you what you have to do in order to get into one of the high security rooms. I'll put on the e-bot head. Ebot, what are you doing? Find the intruders. Yes, 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 that's the second time in this game you have to put on the corpse of an Ebot to trick someone into thinking you're an Ebot. I guess it's a bit more convincing this go around, but it's still pretty damn stupid. That's just it, sir. They locked the security door behind them. I'll open it for you. Do not let them rummage around in there. If they reach the main computer, then they could open every door in this building. We are on full alert, sir. Good. Now go find those rats. Yeah, that 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 was a thing that happened there, folks. It's <laughs> it's remarkable that Mr. Glim couldn't tell that was Dashu. I mean, the voice alone's a dead giveaway. But whatever, Dashu now can get into Mr. Glim's high security area that's conveniently located away from where he's standing around, and I guess all those computers in front of him don't really do much of anything. So with some mild puzzle solving, Dashu's able to disable the security system. But oh no, they need a passcode to open the door to the room that Mr. Glum's in. How are they going to find that? Why, with the help of Ratman and an e-bot that was in a pod who just so happens to have the security code in his pod because that's totally where you'd put the security code to your office in some launch pod with a random e-bot. Uh, that, that just seems very disorganized, Mr. Glum. Very disorganized. So we got security codes inside of launch pods. Dash you wearing the corpse of an ebot to fool Mr. Glim, and Alan's running around looking like a crappy Batman. But on the plus side, though, it's pretty nice of the dev to let Dashu have the passcode without actually having Alan go over there and tell him about it. It just saves some time. Time that we can be spending witnessing the showdown. Oh, let's watch that now, shall we? Sir, two reports are coming saying there is an army marching toward Cosmo. What? Where are they now? They just reached the Chagrin Tower, sir. Where did they come from? Please, don't hurt me! Your evil worship is beating the invidious Umbra with power! I can turn it off! The power is being sent from inside our tower! Just let me live! Please! Shut down the tower and you won't get hurt, Bob! Um, okay, so I guess the tower fed Satan some power. Power that he only bothered to use once to knock the head off the mech. And since then, he's just been preoccupied standing in front of a bunch of people holding up rush lights. Yeah, that's pathetically weak. Oh my god. But hey, here's Alum and Deshu going down the final corridor to meet with Mr. Glem. Let's go. This hall is full of lurids! Ah, the presence is making my head split! Mr. Glim's office should be at the end of this hall. Let's go quick! I, I can't take much more of this! Well, it appears that Dash, you forgot all you need to do to keep the lurids away is use your rushlight. But yeah, he, he's got a sudden case of the dumbasseries because, well, why not? You can't have both protagonists get to Mr. Glim because that would be an unfair fight, I suppose. And also, you see, where these guys are at right now is a long, narrow hallway. And in this very, very same building, just a couple of rooms away, are a lot of e-bots. Why doesn't Mr. Clem just take all of these hundreds of e-bots, turn them on, which apparently he can do, and just have them walk down this hallway and kill Alum and Dashu? I just, again... How stupid is everyone getting? I guess they've all started huffing paint or something like that. Dash you, just relax. They can't hurt us. We are protected by our rush lights. Yeah, but they're in my head. It must be my helmet protecting me. I'm losing it, Alan. You have to go on without me. I'm going to hurt you. Go help the Rogations. I'll take it from here. Use this terminal to shut down the e-box. I'll see you on the other side, my friend. Look out! 
Well, that's the second time that's happened to Dashu in this game. It must be his fetish. The amount of ass pulls in this game is just staggering. Seriously, I mean, this anus has probably just been worn the fuck out from everything they've been pulling out of it. Every single time one of our heroes is in an unescapable situation, an ass pull happens and they're saved. Hurrah! Be because, I don't know, again, this is a weird game where the protagonists are magical beings that just have amazing luck. Who the heck are you? Hurrah! My name is Rufus. I designed the hood pillows. What? Nah, nah, the dude's not lying. It's completely true. Rufus built the heat pillars and became a rat somehow. How? Who knows? But, well, that's the least of our concerns because the story that Rufus tells is something, all right? All I ever wanted to do was keep people warm. Well, they're all nice and warm now, but they've lost their grip on reality. No, 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 no. You are the people who are listening to the voice in your head and blindly following whatever it says. The only other person we have met in this city has been Esther, who's been vagued out, but that's been incredibly inconsistent, so who knows, maybe she's an alcoholic. And then we've met Mr. Glim, who is just kind of evil for the sake of being evil but everyone else uh, the guy who worked at the little shipping post he seemed cool the little woodsman dude seemed all right and the guy who was guarding the arcade he didn't seem much like an asshole or living in a fantasy world they all seemed like normal people working their day-to-day -day lives and well the woodsman got sad for a minute there but he drank the juice and now he's cool so whoop de doo you see my daughter was taken from me by the land of Tide. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I Maybe I'm the one losing my grip on reality. Yeah, now Dash U has a moment of clarity. A bit late, but hey, I guess it counts. But nevertheless, our little mouse man here talks about how the cold killed his daughter. So he built the heat pillar so no one else would ever have to experience that pain. And then Alum and the Rogations destroyed the heat pillar. Again, what they did was actually pretty damn bad. Apparently, children freeze to death in this universe, and the heat pillar was preventing that. Surely they could have come up with some non-violent, perhaps even democratic means of getting rid of Mr. Glim. But instead, they go about destroying the infrastructure and causing suffering. This is going to affect people negatively. I don't see how these people think what they're doing is good on any level. But again... This game is a fantastic insight into the mind of a religious fanatic terrorist. The tears were frozen to her little cheeks. From that day forward, I devoted my life to designing the heat pillars. I didn't want anyone to ever have to experience such a terrible occurrence ever again. I designed an amazing way to generate enough energy to heat an entire city. That's when... He came along. Glim painted my imagination with so many kind things. His plan seemed so reasonable. He had a lot of sway over the people of Chroma. That was the name of the town before it became Cosmos. A lot of people agreed to work together and build the heat pillars. Thus, Cosmos City was born. What? Wait a minute. This has been a fairly recent development. The game made it seem like... People didn't know what was going on. And uh, wait a minute, how old's Alum? How old's Mr. Glim? Uh, Mr. Glim seems like maybe he's in his 40s. Alum seems like he's in his 20s. So was Mr. Glim like a kid when he came up with this plan? Because Alum says he knew nothing about the outside world and didn't even know there was a world beyond Cosmos. But uh, wait a minute, there would have been a lot of people who would have known about this city that existed before Cosmos. And hell, there would have been a lot of people who built Cosmos who were still alive. The people who built the heat pillars and all the towers are still alive. I am so confused, folks. How did they build up this city so quickly? I, there's so many questions. And let me guess. The Lurd started showing up. Mr. Glim created his e-bots. And he became the obvious leader for Cosmos. Yes. The work gave people a sense of value and unity. E-bots gave them security. 
thus creating a bubble that no rushlight could enter. Okay, so people had unity, security, a sense of purpose. And that's a bad thing, because no rushlight could enter that bubble. I mean, yeah, people are happy, content, and enjoying life. They don't need your damn juice. What type of message are you sending, game? Only the Umbra could plan something so wrong to seem so right. Which, I suppose, would be a convincing argument if it seemed like the altruist was really offering anything better than what Cosmos is offering. Because he's not. He's just saying he'll cure you of the vague and when you die, you get to hang out with him. That's a pretty crummy offer compared to his sense of purpose, unity, security, and harmony. The here and now matters too, guys. Oh, I tried to open Cosmos for people to come and go as they please. Glim was afraid of losing control. He turned his e-bots against me and threw me out. Okay, that, that's pretty evil. Finally, Mr. Glim does something that's kind of a dick move. Well, other than, you know, killing those people and shooting that alum. But you get my point, right? Sewers became my home. I spent years scrounging around, sleeping and eating in the sewage. Then, just this morning, the memory of my daughter suddenly rang through me as if it was the first real heartbeat I ever felt. The underlying pain was alive again. But so was I. I came out of the sewers to find a giant robot marching for Cosmos. I knew something was afoot. I had to find out what. That was Alum. He killed the ice giant guard in the Great Pass. An ancient race of rush light bearers followed behind him. I don't know anything about the rush... rush light, did you call it? I just know. I want to help you guys fight this injustice. I want to make my daughter proud of me. That's a noble thought, Mr. Ratman. But what injustice are you talking about? Alm's about to kill Mr. Glim? The city lost its heat pillar? What are you gonna do? I guess you killed that Ebot, so hurrah to you. And what's also interesting, too, is the game makes it clear that people don't know anything about the rush lights. So, they're not gonna know that these are supposed to be good things. Instead, they're gonna think there's a bunch of crazy people with lanterns trying to get them to drink some strange beverage they carry around their necks. Yeah, it's not gonna go well, to say the least. Rufus, when people die at a young age, like your daughter, when they pass before they're old enough to decide whether or not they will drink a rush light, the altruist takes them home to be with him, because he is loving and just. Uh, yeah, Dash, you, I'm not going to take your word for that. And also, is it just me, or does this seem incredibly manipulative and really insensitive? It's like, hey, you know, Mr. Man who's grieving his lost child who froze to death. Um, by the way, my God, he says it's, it's cool that your kid died when she was young because now she's hanging out with him because, you know, you couldn't make a choice because, well, we have to cover our ass with that whole what happens to people when they die young thing. Although it does beg the question. What about all the people who apparently don't know anything about Rushlight who died? Or what's up with them? Do they get to go to heaven too? Even though they were never allowed to make the choice because they didn't even know there was a choice to be made? I mean, these are very classic theological questions that have been addressed in Christianity. Problem is, this is Alum, not a theology class. What? What are you saying? There's a chance you can still see your daughter again. How? Tell me how! Wow, this is vile. This is really fucking vile. Drink from this rushlight. It will free you from the vague and reconcile your relationship with the unfeigned altruist. What is it? It is the truth. The truth that the altruist will look beyond all your faults and see your need. The truth that you are loved and forgiven the moment you drink it. But I... All right! If I might see my daughter again... I'll take it! Now here's the thing, I thought for the rush lights to work you had to make a conscious informed decision. I'm pretty sure the game said that earlier on, but that's never happened outside of the one time Alan made the choice. Although, again, it really wasn't a choice, it was drink or die. Yeah, Alan doesn't seem to know what exactly a choice is. It seems to confuse do this or die, and emotional manipulation with making a conscious and informed decision. So anyway, I, I'm not exactly sure what happens with the rap man. I guess the drink didn't work or something? I don't know. But either way, he's a real hero because he shuts down the e-bots before they kill all the elves. And yeah, Alum gets to have his heroic last stand against the villain. So let's go watch all this happen. Alum!
Did he cock that gun with his mind? Far enough. One more step and I'll blow a hole clear through her head. Glim, don't. Oh no, please don't kill a character I'm super emotionally invested in and care a lot about. I am a brave warrior protecting my land, my people. Executing a woman who is tied down? You call that bravery? Whoa, wait, wait a minute. Invidious Umbra is like right there. Why doesn't he like just punch out the glass and kill Alum, who's distracted? Oh my god. Either way, we get an epic fight scene between Alum and, well, the baddie. Spoiler alert, Alum wins. Ah! Yeah, you can't stab him, but you can throw him out a window because it's not really murder, it's gravity doing the killing for you. Kiss a goat, Mr. Glim. Yeah, all these near swears are kind of weird. So Alum saves Esther, the rat dude. Again, disables the e-bots. Although, what the hell is happening with this e-bot? It just falls down. Seriously, look. Nothing is touching it. And then it falls down. How bizarre. Alum, I thought I'd never see you again. I... I should have trusted you. Mr. Glim seemed so strong and sincere. He led me to doubt you. All I've ever wanted was to be with you and help you. I discovered more about reality in the last few days than I ever have my entire life. Ah, that seems a little clumsily written to me, but yeah, I guess he's kind of right. He discovered more about life, namely that there was an outside, and he was filled with people that apparently all knew about Cosmos. It's really actually kind of strange. Hmm, you think the Rogations should have just told people that there was an outside and they're from it? Maybe that would have been effective in causing some doubt in the power of Mr. Glim. Never mind, this is a dramatic moment that I'm just overthinking. The vague, Alan. It consumed me. Everything was gray. Everything was empty. I looked for words, but there were none. I tried to fight it. I did, I swear. But when the emotions faded, I thought love didn't exist. I couldn't take it. I gave up. So she gave up on life because she thought love didn't exist. Uh, okay. That's what we're going with that, I guess. I couldn't find any real reason to live, to love, to make decisions. Because she was a meth addict. Kids, meth, not even once. Now I don't know what to do. Please, Al, forgive me. I need your rush light. A boom, chicka, bow, bow. Hey, baby, let me put my rush light inside of you. Bow, bow. A boom, chicka. Share your rush light with her, Alum. Her heart is ready to receive it. I. I can't forgive her. She betrayed me, Altruist. She turned her back on me. Alum. You're being a bit of a whiny bitch. But now you're not gonna say that, are you? How could she be so cruel? So heartless. I thought it was the vague, unless you're convinced now she never had the vague. Because she seems, you know, completely fine now. So maybe Alum's wised up to it all. Maybe she did just want to divorce him now since, you know, he has a sword and he just killed a guy. She kind of wants to cover her own ass, so. No, I can't, Esther. I won't. I tried so hard to help you. You wouldn't believe me. I believe you now, Alum. Please. I can't forgive you after what you put me through. Well, uh, yeah, this is all very weird and completely unexpected. I, I don't know. Maybe Alum is like a Sisyphus and he has to keep rolling Esther up this hill. And then he finally got to the top of the hill and he was like, oh, well, now that the rolling up actually was really fun, I'm going to keep doing that. So have a nice life. Esther, look out. Again, I guess Mr. Glim cocks his gun with his brain and also... Alum warns her about Mr. Glim before there's anything even there. Huh. Mr. Glim? I'm guessing that means Dashu and Alum got to his off. Okay, that, that's a way to respond to a body dangling in front of you. Well, Mr. T was never the brains of the A-Team. So nevertheless, Alum falls down. And then, pretty much like the Black Knight and Monty Python, Mr. Glim's not quite dead yet. So he shoots Alum. And then now he's for real super dead. <laughs> what the hell's going on?
so yeah, Esther's super sad about it, despite the fact that all Alum has done since he rescued her is bitch about how he doesn't want to be with her anymore and he can't forgive her, so yeah, that, that's a great way to spend those last few precious moments with your wife, you shit lord. And he doesn't even, like, call out her name. No, he, he calls out the name of the altruist. Which really makes me think that they're in some weird homoerotic... Oh, he's a ghost now. Oh, that's delightful. The altruist! He could not forgive her! I was right! So did Satan and the altruist make some Job-esque bet between each other? About what Alan would do? Huh. Well, I guess you missed your opportunity to have a bunch of bandits and have his whole family be massacred and the whole well, warts thing. But okay, whatever their bet was, Satan appears to have won it. But God's all like, screw you, no bagsies, I make up the rules, so he's coming to live with me now. It's really weird and ham-fisted, and it feels like these people were trying to quote a Bible verse, but they didn't want to quote a Bible verse, so they just kind of made up some religious -y stuff to say. Here, listen. Alam is an empty man being plucked from the noise of the veil. He may not have reflected my love properly. He may not have followed my will perfectly. He may not have listened to my voice undividedly, but at one point in his life, he said yes to me. Yes to my love towards him. Okay, cool. Alum's saved now, even though he just said yes. It, whatever. Uh, I guess that's all you need to do. Once saved, always saved sort of deal here. So, hey, let's check out heaven, guys. Nice, isn't it? Symmetry? Is that you? Yup, fresh as a daisy. No more aches, no more pains. Where are we, Symmetry? This is home, Alum. We are home. The air here. It's what I was meant to breathe. Good to know you still need lungs even though you're dead. I just know the altruist is going to take care of everything. And how is that any better than what Mr. Glim was trying to do on Earth? I mean, why does the altruist get it past? He's essentially doing the same thing. Oh, I came to tell you. When you're ready, you should come and eat with the others. I'm sure they can't wait to see you again. Who? The altruists, the Rogations. I even had the honor of meeting your parents. What? How? That's impossible. They lived and died in Cosmos. What? Again, how old is Mr. Glim? The game said the rat dude built the heat pillars and the whole community came together and that wasn't too long ago. What the? I, I, I don't get the chronology of this game. I am at a loss here, folks. So, Adam's parents lived and died in Cosmos. They die like at 16 or something? Is Mr. Glim like a thousand years old? Is he like some immortal vampire Highlander thing? I, I don't know. I don't know anything anymore, folks. They never knew the altruists. They never drank a rushlight. Well, they told me when they were just getting married, they briefly spoke to a man who told them about the unfeigned love. In their hearts, they agreed with what he was saying. So these rushlights just don't really matter, but they do. You just have to agree that the altruist is a good guy, then you get to go to hell. I mean, what? This is some lazy theology game. You're just rolling with it at this point. Yeah, Alan would be sad if his parents weren't here, so you had to kind of figure out a way to wedge him in there. Yeah, whatever. Let's get out of heaven. It's not particularly interesting and deal with more earthly matters, like his wife Esther, who God's now taken a liking to. Ooh, boom, chicka, bow, bow. She's going to get some slap a second. No! Alan, why? Don't die! Esther, it's okay. Do not let your heart be troubled. Who are you? I am the unfeigned altruist. So without any skepticism like every other person in this game, she blindly accepts what the altruist is offering. She gets a rushlight, she uses it against the Satan thing. The rest of the elf people use their rushlight, and that does it! The motherfucking end. Everything is fine again. Invidious Umbra may come back. Ooh, he was such a threat beforehand, folks. I can't tell you. Whoa, we're done. We are done. We are done. We are done. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who rebuilt the heat pillar that got smashed? What? Was there more than one heat pillar? What? It's, oh, 
uh, what? Okay, there, there's probably looting and rioting going on, but yay, the altruist won, and is there's a mech in the middle of the city that they're going to have to move. <laughs> oh, how could this be real? Um, I'll see you guys. I'll probably review this later. Bye-bye.